I really enjoyed Piero's hangout yesterday. Uh, some interesting things, interesting ideas came up. A lot of stuff that I, you know, really got my mind working. Um, really enjoyed talking to the people that I was speaking to because we have a lot in common, it would seem, but we disagree enough to want to debate things. Now, that doesn't come up every day. That's not something that you're going to find by strolling into the local coffee shop. Believe me, I spend most of my leisure hours in coffee shops, and I never talk to anybody. But <laughs> um, it's uh, it's interesting that um, that one of the people there, um, Gary, uh, brought up the issue, an issue that I didn't think anybody would ever really make a case for, um, but somebody has. Um, we were talking about the will, and I was saying, you know, in spite of my reputation, I guess, and as much as I, ha I have a philosophical <laughs> reputation as a Nietzschean, that's not entirely true. But, um, you know, I'm not really that big on the will to power, uh, but I think that the will to power is a massive uh, part of us, but we have many other wills. Um, and... Gary mentioned something called the will to comfort. Now, I'd, I would have liked to have probed him on that to see what he meant. Um, because it's the first time that I've ever heard someone sort of making um, or attempting to make a powerful, compelling, philosophical case for the crazy mess that we're in right now. Or maybe if we follow that line of reasoning, it's not a crazy mess. It's the logical culmination of, of our evolution as a species. He mentioned something called the will to comfort. Now, again, I didn't get a chance to sort of say, what 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 is that, the will to comfort? Um, but, you know, looking at it on the surface, which, you know, is all that I have because I don't have anything to go on, um, I'm trying to f guess, is that the driving force in our um, in our makeup? The way Nietzsche says the will to power is the driving force? Or is it one of many wills? Um, as I, you know, That's kind of the way I look at it. I say we have the will to meaning, the will to power, the will to, uh, to a certain extent, we have the will to comfort, yes. But you know, we have so many of them, and they always seem to compete with each other and collide and fight with each other within that mass of contradictions that is a human being that we can I, I'm not comfortable with saying that any of them really predominates over time I think that they all sort of jockey for position and perhaps within individuals one might be more predominant than another it would explain a lot about the differences in human behavior but the will to comfort again that strikes me as what McDonald's and Walmart and cookie cutter subdivisions and card dealerships and phone uh, kiosks at strip malls um, sell us. They sell us all the neat little gadgets so we can sit in our homes, on our couches, never lift a finger, eat all kinds of yummy food, um, and then when that makes us unhealthy, we have the proper kinds of furniture and other goodies, stuff we can get at any pharmacy now, that will at least counteract the feelings that are um, that arise when we attempt to live only for comfort. Um, if you don't want to do anything that's going to, uh, you know, make you uncomfortable, um, you know, no pain, no gain, if you're going to take that and throw it down the sink, well, okay. What you get is you get all kinds of discomfort caused by you attempting to achieve comfort. You sit on your uh, couch and eat chocolate all day or drink beer, uh, watch TV and get no exercise because it's it tires you out and it's a waste of time and it's boring and everything. Uh, you'd rather just watch TV and play video games and maybe argue with people on the internet, surf pornography. There's another massive, uh, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, massive phenomenon catering to the will to comfort, eh? the will to pleasure. Um, you know, you can do all of that stuff. Never leave your house. And now, um, you know, we have 
uh, or there are there are side effects to that though, which is you know things like obesity, cirrhosis of the liver if you drink too much, lung cancer if you smoke too many cigarettes, or you know uh, all kinds of huge health problems if you uh, if you indulge too much in all the things that make us comfortable and all the things that consumer capitalism has to offer us um, to give us pleasure. Now um, that causes problems. Chocolate causes diabetes, etc. But then you go to the pharmacy and it's got the solution to all of those. You take pills, you buy even more products. You'd never, ever um, attempt to limit or, I guess, um, limit or control that will to comfort. Again, I'm not trying to sort of say that this is what he is saying. I'm just taking the bare bones and trying to analyze what on earth a will to comfort would be. Uh, reminds me again of you know Nietzsche's idea of the last man. Um, the uh, you know I'll just give Wiki's little blurb here. Um, the last man, der letzte Mensch, um, is a term used by the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche in Thus Spoke Zarathustra to, des to describe the antithesis of the imagined superior being, the Übermensch, whose imminent appearance is heralded by Zarathustra. The last man is tired of life, takes no risks, and seeks only comfort and security. Um, and he said that, uh, in many ways, the last man is actually just the ultimate now end game of human civilization. Walmart has conquered the world. Um, I won't say that it's Walmart, because, you know, you go overseas and you see Carrefour and Tesco uh, getting a pretty good uh, slice of the world's comfort and, uh, I don't know, pleasure industry. Um, but um, it's, uh, it's interesting that someone would actually say that we have a will to this. Um, as long as you're warm, your feet are by the fire, and, um, and uh, you know, you've um, you got a nice safe and secure environment and lots of goodies and beer in the fridge um, and as much porn as you want and perhaps access to sex partners as, as many of those as you want um, if anyone's seen the uh, the or read the book THX 1138 by uh, Ben Bova made into a movie by uh, George Lucas or was it Steven Spielberg can't remember but anyway it's kind of that idea that pleasure or even better, I guess, would be Brave New World, where pleasure is all that matters. Comfort and pleasure are all that matter. They've created an entire civilization based on that in these two science fiction novels. And it's... Um, these were meant as satires. I've never, ever come across somebody who is trying to make a case for this as being fundamentally what we are. And that fascinated me. Um, discomfort, um, displeasure, or lack of pre pleasure, pleasure, or deprivation of pleasure, or even deferral of pleasure is absolutely anathema, especially in uh, Brave New World. There's even a neat little scene in there where a young schoolgirl said, one time I had to wait an entire half hour before I could have whatever it is, a chocolate bar or something, and it was the worst half hour of my entire life. There's no gratification delay at all in Brave New World. You, you want something, you do it immediately. Um, and they so arrange society to make that possible for everybody. Uh, to the point where, you know, you don't even need secret police or coercion to control people. You just use pleasure. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, these were satires. To say that we have a will to comfort... If that's and and it was implied, I think, and again, I don't want to strawman anybody, but it was implied that that's our strongest will. That's is what makes us what we are. Um, we are the last man. The last man is the best that life has to offer us. Uh, well, okay, if you can say that, <laughs> that's that's all very well. Uh, you're gonna have to sell me on that idea. Um, I keep myself reasonably fit. And you're going to have a hard time convincing me of the utility of no longer uh, bicycling everywhere. Um, instead of just drinking coffee with stevia in it to put two big teaspoons of honey or brown, or brown sugar in it, along with, you know, a 
gallon of cream or something like that and a big slice of cheesecake every single time I go in there. Maybe five slices of cheesecake. How's that? Um, I, that's going to be a hard sell because I know where these things lead. I know where an excess of comfort leads. Um, I don't know. Maybe he's maybe we're not talking about an excess of comfort here and neither am I by the way I'm not saying I'm going to remove all of my comforts from life I really like coffee <laughs> I uh, <clears throat> well I, I'm a normal male with a normal libido and I like having sex you know I, I like all these nice comfy things but I don't want to just sit in my house and just do that there's a ton of other things out there that I want to do and, and most of them have precious little to do with comfort Sitting on your bicycle for three hours at the age of 50 is not comfortable, and you have to override a lot of uncomfortable sensations in your body to deal with the wonderful atavistic feeling that I get when I'm pedaling my bicycle on a sunny day beside the river. Um, it's There's nothing to compare that to, or at least in terms of pleasure. Uh, it's, you know, uh, or... You know, some people go rock climbing or boxing or hiking or something like this. And I'm not talking just the mass-produced stuff where you pay somebody a pile of money and he brings you out to a place somewhere where you avail yourself of some prefab type of entertainment. No, no, or go to a rock climbing stadium or something like this. No, I'm talking about actually going out and doing this stuff in the wild or whatever, uh, you know, really doing it for, you know, perhaps a reason you want to get up there. Um, you're not just sort of going through the motions type thing. The will to comfort, I think, is kind of a crazy idea, and I don't, I'm not really sure that it's an idea he's going to defend. Um, but it's certainly been parodied. It's been <laughs> parodied so many times. Anyone who's parodying our own civilization right now, this crazy search for pleasure and security, um, completely devoid of any actual meaning. Um, you know, people, it's been... That's exactly what they're parodying. They're parodying a, an obsession with comfort and with pleasure. Um, human history is replete with examples of why you shouldn't go overboard with the pleasure stuff. Um, some, you know, again, the, a lot of the religious sort of take that too far. Like the Catholic uh, Church is notorious for teaching people to deny themselves and to start feeling that pain as something that's good for them the pain of denial and asceticism. Uh, now, I'll be the first to admit that asceticism does have uh, pleasures all of its own. They're weird backhand pleasures. Um, I, I always say that, you know, I mentioned I'm into Tantra, and Tantra is a lot of, there's a lot of self-denial there, which does turn into a weird pleasure. Uh, more than a pleasure. <laughs> uh, but I don't think that's what um, that's what the Catholic Church is teaching. They're saying that pain is good for you. <laughs> um, and that's, you know, a lot of religious people are telling you that, that pain is good for you, and I'm not asserting that. And other people would say that pleasure is good for you. I get that, I think, from Benatar. He certainly says that, that pleasure is the best that life has to offer us. Sorry. Bullshit, Benatar. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to tell me that I live only for p pleasure. Forget it. I do so many uh, uncomfortable things over the course of every day. Voluntarily, by the way. I, I actually look forward to doing these terribly uncomfortable things. That, no, I, he's he's just simply wrong. There's more to life than that. Um, and and I would also say that, that that kind of applies in a big way to any uh, anyone trying to push the idea of the will to comfort. Uh, no, 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 no. You, you go have your will to comfort and uh, and see where that gets you. I think that that is essentially, you know, to switch the cart and the horse a bit. Uh, a bit. That's what what makes you uh, an ethicist is when you think that comfort is all that there is, and then you get all that comfort and it's nothing. In fact, it's it's that feeling you get after you've just drank twenty beers when you should have just stopped at two, or the feeling you get when you've eaten an entire cheesecake when you should have had a inch wedge of it. Um, will to pleasure, will to comfort. <laughs> um, never have I heard someone make a coherent case for um, the herd being on the right track. The last man, the person who worships at the altar of consumer capitalism. 
it's interesting that I lived long enough to hear that, and I think I would like to hear a lot more about it. <laughs> Assuming, of course, I've gotten this wrong. Uh, right, I mean, if I've gotten this wrong, I apologize unreservedly and look forward to being properly chastised and corrected and denounced. <laughs>